This is a Boeing 737, operated by the low-cost airline Jeju Air. It had taken off from Bangkok, then to Thailand, and after a flight of about 3,500 kilometers, it was about to land at Muin Airport in South Korea. There were 181 people on board, including six crew members and 175 passengers, almost all South Koreans. Unfortunately, as we have seen from the many images on the web, something went wrong. The landing procedure went wrong and the landing gear literally didn't come out. It remained inside the fuselage. From the images circulating on the web, the plane practically covered a large stretch of runway, literally scraping its fuselage on the asphalt. He failed to slow down, went off the track around 9.03 local time, and literally crashed into a wall, exploding. The impact was extremely violent and, unfortunately, the victims were 179 out of 181. Two people, yes, incredibly, were saved. First, reconstructions. So, let's start with one thing. At the moment, there are no clear and unequivocal answers. The investigation is ongoing and it will usually take weeks, if not months, to have a reconstruction of what happened. So everything we will hear even in this video should be taken with a pinch of salt and it is important to talk about hypotheses will then have to be validated with official information and data from the very first reconstructions. Based mainly on amateur videos, it would seem that the right engine of the aircraft had a problem, probably due to a bird strike, that is the impact of one or more birds with the engine turbine. Supporting this hypothesis is also the statement from the South Korean transport minister who said that the control tower had warned the crew of this plane about the risk of a bird strike at 8.57, so six minutes before the crash. The pilot then sent out a mayday at 8.58. There are a lot of questions right now. There are three questions that keep coming up. One. In what cases can the landing gears jam? 2. Why didn't the plane put the engines in reverse to slow down as it slid to the ground? 3. Having seen the problem of the landing gears not coming out, why didn't the pilot regain altitude and then try to land again? Alright, we asked these questions to a pilot, Diego Carrara, to get some answers from someone who does this for a living, and here's what came out. The first question is about the landing gear. In which cases do they not open? The landing gear may not have come down due to a mechanical block or in the most common cases, a failure of the hydraulic system. However, as the pilot tells us, all airplanes with retractable landing gear, that is, with these landing gears that come out, are equipped with an emergency manual extension system. Obviously, he tells us, since we're not yet sure about the actual dynamics of the accident, it's hard to understand why the landing gear wasn't extended. And speaking of landing gear, there's some breaking news. In fact, there was another plane from the same company, Jeju Air, that had a similar problem with the landing gear. Therefore, as confirmed by the Vice Minister of Civil Aviation, Zhou Zhongwan, until January 3rd, there will be a technical check of the engines and landing gear for 101 planes, all 737s, of six airlines that use it. Second question, why weren't the engines turned on in reverse? as if it were reverse gear to slow down? If the bird strike hypothesis is confirmed, this could mean that one of the engines was no longer working. So if it wasn't working anymore, obviously no reverse, no reverse gear. Third question, having seen the problem with the landing gear, which usually opens several minutes before touchdown, touching the ground, why didn't the pilot regain altitude and then try landing again? So, when a failure occurs normally, if it does not limit the flight time and there is enough fuel to carry out all the procedures calmly, the approach is not started until the troubleshooting has been completed, that is, until the problem is solved. So, 
Considering the dynamics, the pilot we spoke to suggested that the time available in flight was a major factor. So the pilot of this plane probably didn't have the autonomy to stay in flight. As you can see, there are many questions and doubts, such as those raised by the comments of Italian aviation expert Allegri. In fact, he says it is unlikely that the bird strike alone can explain the extent of the disaster. It's clear, he says, that there could have been a bird strike. But the consequences that have occurred are really too serious for this to be the direct cause of the accident. In any case, in the next few days, in the next few weeks, there will certainly be more data and information, and we will promptly update you. In the meantime, there is one last general consideration that answers the question that many of you will be asking yourselves. Is the plane still the safest means of transport? The answer is absolutely yes. Even though these incidents go around the world in just a few minutes through the web, but they remain statistical outliers. Planes are definitely the safest mode of transport. Look at this chart. It compares the fatalities in planes, trains, and cars. This is a global average, so it is clear that these data can vary from country to country, but the orders of magnitude are more or less the same. As you can see, cars are about 60 times less safe than planes and 7 to 8 times less safe than trains. So despite the data and statistics being so clear, we are still more afraid of a plane, generally. One of the main reasons is probably the media power of certain images, which conditions us, conditions us on an emotional level. In fact, after these images, even I and my unconscious will surely be more afraid when I take the next flight. However, however, we must not forget the facts and data, therefore rationality. Cars and motorcycles are much, much more dangerous than an airplane. That said, we will keep you updated on this matter. Thank you for following us until the end, and I will see you next time, always here on Joe Papi. Bye.